Do you think I could do a backflip on it? Drum roll, please. This could be you. Bam, freezer. Bam, freezer. And over here. Whoa. It's a stock Yanmar 3YM 30AE, 30 horsepower. They're li li lithionics. Each one is a 400 amp, 12 volt battery. Whoa. This is Joel. Together with Tony and Jared, he gave up everything to buy a boat and go on the adventure of a lifetime. But after a death-defying sail to Cuba, he returned to Key West and found himself alone. Wish me luck on this adventure. When Michael finished school, I asked her to sail with me to the Bahamas. She agreed, but joined strictly as crew. Four months later, we made it to the Dominican Republic. Broke and in love. Bums on a Boat is a true story about facing fear, finding adventure, and falling in love. Each tale is brought to you by our patrons and viewers. Subscribe and click the bell to get notified about weekly premieres and visit our website to learn more. Thank you for watching. We're walking away with a little girl. These are the tales of Boab. Caterpillar, 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 shock mate. Good morning, shock mate. This is caterpillar. Over. Good morning. You want to go up one? Up one. Good morning, how are you? Uh, pretty good, how about yourself? Pretty good, just checking in with you guys. Wondering if you're ready for the bums and the uh, YouTube. We are, come on over. Hey guys, I'm Michael. This I'm is Joel. Oh, I'm Joel. We f***ed it up. Hey right. guys, I'm Michael. Oh, and this is Joel. <laughs> We're bums on a boat. Oh, we've got an awesome boat tour for you guys here today. This is not our boat. This is our good friends, Bill, Danali, and Drew. SV Caterpillar. She's a Nisna 44. We asked. You guys wanted it. So here it is. Yeah, we put our feelers out there and there was a lot of comments that said, do the tour. Do the tour. Yep, there was some serious monohaul fans, some serious do catamaran it. fans. Thanks to Bill and Dana Lee for opening up their home and letting us snoop around. And yeah. it's, it's an epic boat. I can't wait for you guys this to see this. This is a gorgeous boat. Yeah, so I'm gonna actually step behind the camera and Bill knows more about this boat than anybody. He's been through every square inch of this boat with a yep. toothbrush probably on they his knees. They did a massive refit. Yeah, so Michael, if you have any questions, she's gonna try to drum up some good questions. I'm that try maybe... to anticipate all your questions, but feel free to leave any that I don't cover in the comments below and we'll get to them. Here we are in the cockpit, guys. This is the main hangout area. We've got lots of shade protection up. Seating for, gosh, probably like six to eight people, right? There have been a lot of people on this boat hanging out before. But all the cool stuff is over here behind the wheel, and Bill's going to show you what they got. During our refit, we did, we repowered. We have two new engines, so they came with these new panels. Uh, we put in a new compass, a new electronics package. Um, just about every system on this boat's been renewed. But the Garmin is a 10 inch 8610 model um, with a, the newest autopilot system, the newest radar, broadband radar. Um, it's got some really cool features. One of the things that I like about it and what we liked about the boat is that it's right here in the cockpit. You know, some people like their, their cockpit to be separate, so they have more room to socialize in the, ca in the, ca in the cockpit or whatever, having the helm separate. But we really like having it here because we're a small crew and having to be able to 
steer the boat and talk to people or get a hold of someone who's sleeping. Like our, our stateroom is right here. So I can holler or knock on here if I need something or vice versa. If Danny needs me and I'm taking a nap while we're out at sea, it works for us. Question for those of you that have boats with GPS is what kind of a GPS do you have and do you trust? What? It's a little breezy out here today, folks. It's always breezy in Loop Rod. Hopefully you can hear us all right. We're just gonna start here at the bow of the boat and work our way backwards. We redesigned this bowsprit configuration with the help of Sparcraft. Um, the boat was designed with a single spar going out for the Code Zero and the Code Zero furler. But we wanted to upsize our anchor with an oversized mantis but with the single spar, it was in the way to deploy. Our solution was to come up with this V-shaped bowsprit, which we had made up and then I installed it and drilled and tapped and, and put it in. It's in the up position right now because when we get to an anchoring or, or mooring, we like to get it out of the way so that it doesn't uh, interfere with the mooring lines or anchor bridle or anything like that. So these, these wires actually attach to the lower part of the hull down towards the water line to hold it down as the you know code zero gets deployed. But have you done much sailing with the code zero? No. Okay, I had yeah. to ask. Uh, we do have the furler right now is, is just lashed down here that would normally be attached right here. Um, because of the storm, we put it down and we just haven't used it. So we just kept it there. Trampolines are pretty epic when you get the breeze coming through. You can hang out here when you're sailing or on anchor in the shade. One of the things we did was replace all of the line around with Dyneema and all of the little D-rings with stain, Teflon coated stainless steel. So it's extra strong and the material itself is super strong. I don't know what the weight rating is. Do you think I could do a backflip on it or would I go through it? Uh, is that dangerous? Yeah, I don't know if I would do a backflip on it. One of the things that Joel and I learned from Sterling, the old sea dog, when we were first cruising through the Bahamas with him, was the art of anchoring and how much harder it is to actually stop a boat and keep it stopped than it is to get going and do some sailing. Let's find out what these guys got as far as anchor tackle to keep their boat set. Bill, over to you. We have a 65 pound Mantis, 200 feet of all chain, um, which is new. We, we replaced the old chain. And uh, we have a Fortress anchor, which is pretty big for our, our backup anchor on, with some chain and, and rope. The windlass is cool because you can uh, raise and lower it effortlessly when it's working. And we mark the chain every 10 feet so we can count how much we're paying out a lot easier. So we don't have one of the fancy chain counters. One of your commenters alleged that this was a million dollar catamaran, which it isn't. If you had a million dollar catamaran, I'm sure you would you would have a sophisticated way to measure your tanks like this. The water on one side and the fuel on the other are exact mirror images of each other. 104 gallons each. So, and they have access ports in here. If you just move the stuff out of the way, there's clean out ports and access ports for servicing inside the tanks. On top of noticing how well this line matches my shirt, I couldn't help noticing how new and nice all of this running rigging is. Yeah, a year and a half in the boatyard we spent and we did a lot of work. All the running rigging has been replaced. Uh, all the standing rigging has been replaced. Um, on a catamaran, they say 10 years is about the limit for standing rigging, regardless of how it looks. So it looked fine. We had it inspected twice by professionals and they said it was fine. Um, but our insurance company said 10 years is a limit on a catamaran. Um, so we had to replace all the standing rigging. And while we're at it, we replaced all of the running rigging also. So all that running rigging is really helpful for me because I came aboard after graduating college and I handle all those lines. And if we haven't met, I've been in the background on some of the videos, but my name's Drew, uh, about to turn 27 and I'm doing this sailing thing instead of working and it's working out pretty well. So from the last sail, I'm taking off the main halyard here. I feel like I'm a mile above the water, but the whole mass goes up 63 feet from the water. I'm just actually just a few feet away. Whew. 
when we got the boat, it had the main halyard run through here and to that winch, the electric winch, and the main sheet came down through the block and straight back to that winch. But we want, and the reefing lines were all slab reefing at the base of the mast. But we wanted to be able to reef the boat from the cockpit. So we redesigned the reefing system. I installed the, this, this organizer here and I installed that jam block there um, and fabricated the deck configuration to mount it on. Lola, what do you think? What do you think of those winches? That's an electric winch, ladies and gentlemen. Speaking of electricity, what we've got right here are some walk-on solar panels. How much, how many watts of solar power are you guys generating? Right now, this is a 595 watt array in, in the five different panels. Um, they're a little bit different because they're different sizes, but they total up to 595 watts. Is that enough for your energy consumption? No. No, okay. Nah. We could use another thousand easily. Wow. Um, and we plan on putting in another uh, system in the back with some hard panels that um, that are more efficient and, and cheaper actually. Now if I had to guess one of the reasons why they could do with so many more watts of solar is because of their capacity to make things super cold on this boat. Bam, freezer, bam, freezer. And over here, whoa, ice maker. Now this thing isn't plugged in at the moment, but normally that thing is up and running and these guys are dishing up ice cold beverages to anybody hanging out on their boat. And I gotta say, that makes you really popular. <laughs> I wanted to have enough power to run anything we wanted to run without having to worry about it. So, and that includes ice because ice is, a, I, I mean, I'm addicted to it, so. I had you don't it. realize how addicted you are maybe until it becomes so precious and so rare out here in the cruising world. These freezers that we have are ARBs are made in Australia um, for the Outback Cruiser kind of four x four market. So they're really rugged and they have full compressors in them, full refrigeration freezer compressors. You can store a fair amount of stuff. Um, and they can be set to be refrigerators or freezers. So you can set the temp from zero Fahrenheit up to about 68 or so, I think, and it will maintain that temperature. This is our main uh, electrical panel system. Um, the AC loads and breakers are here, DC over here, and the 12 volt DC and 110 AC here. Our inverter controllers here, and this is really the kind of the I don't want to say brains of the system, but the monitor of the whole system. Um, and it's home screen, that's basic information, is a percent state of charge, how long till the batteries are full or, or empty, depending on whether it's charging or not, and the time and barometer is there. And you can cycle through these screens and see the individual loads and, and charging sources. Let's take a look behind the scenes. Just be careful, don't touch that. So this is the in, inside the AC distribution over here, and the DC distribution is over here. So it's, um, and our solar controllers are behind here. There's one controller for each solar panel separate, which increases the efficiency. So one of the biggest drawbacks of our boat and most boats, I think, is that there's no bathtub. So how are you supposed to take a nice pipe and hot bath at the end of a day if you don't have one? So Caterpillar is equipped with a bathtub, as most boats should be. They actually have uh, a water maker right there, Spectra, water pumps. And you could take a shower in here if you wanted to, but I'm pretty sure you would take a bath every time. Right? I mean, what would you guys do? Would you use this bathtub if, if it came with your boat? If you had this on your boat? Would you use this? I would, if water was not an issue. Drum roll, please. A garage. Wow.
it has these small cabinets in the front and then it opens up into basically a queen size bed room where it's all storage and can you tell us maybe like one or two epic things that you're able to store back here uh yeah number one the sail right oh. sewing machine is in there all the tools and sockets and spares we have uh, bins for plumbing electrical hand tools sandpaper ppe stuff like like um mm. tyvek suits and respirators because we do all the work ourselves so we have to be prepared um and all those are in those bins back there um i also see a foam roller and some backpacks <laughs> yeah backpacks are good for traveling off the boat um foam roller is good for stretching yeah um yeah and and this bulkhead on the side is the back side of the battery so if you actually look in there you'll see that our inverter system is i configured it with two 2000 watt inverters wired in parallel for a 4000 watt inverter output so that's just through the bulkhead and on the other side is where the battery bus bars are so yeah we're saving the best for last that's going to be the batteries think you could write a book there i think i could it's pretty comfortable it's basically just a nice desk coming further aft is the main stateroom where we sleep so doubles as the engine room as yeah. well Bloody. i'm gonna let bill yeah. take it away you guys get up close and personal to check this out the engines are underneath the beds. Behind there is the systems for the um, steering mechanism, the autopilot and the autopilot control arm are all through there. The access to the you know rudder posts and all those systems are through that door. So this is the engine room. Like I said, the, the one on the port side is identical with a couple of exceptions. Uh, the first being this one is plumbed to the hot water tank. So these takeoff plugs um, was able to put these fittings in to run lines that will that go up through the water tank so when this engine runs it heats the water in our hot water tank system other than that it's identical so we've replaced the stock alternator with this 250 amp high output alternator which is actually quite small given how much output it has but that's because everything's external all the controls are external from it so it um sends the power out through the, into this device which is called the rectifier and the rectifier converts the current into DC current it goes through this big breaker and then all the way through these wires up to the batteries which we'll show you in a minute but that's yeah basically how the power system works with the high output alternator I had to replace the pulleys because it uses a bigger wider belt so all the, the crank pulley and the water pump pulley needed to be bigger. And um, other than that, it's a stock Yanmar 3YM30AE 30 horsepower engine. This is the alternator regulator. So that, that regulates external regulator for the alternator. This is a tachometer stabilizer because the tachometers read from the feed from the alternators because they're not stock. This device allows it to take the input pulses and convert it to an ac accurate, so the tachometer reads accurately with a different alternator. So. All right, so this is the port side hull. The stateroom in the back is virtually identical, mirror image of the one on the uh, owner's side. And the galley down, which is the feature that we like a lot, a lot of people don't, a lot of controversy on catamarans of whether you have the galley up or galley down, but we like it down. We modified it considerably when we took it. Uh, there was a Force 10 uh, propane stove here, um, an oven, and we took it out and put in the electric, electric induction cooktop. And I built these sh uh, shelves Whoa. to go in place of the, um, the oven just for storage. And the silicone mat actually allows it to cook right through there because it uses mag magnetism. Um, and that helps to keep the pots from sliding around. Genius. Um, yeah, it's all touch screen or type glass. So um, it's really easy to clean. What's the brand actually? It's Can you show this? Yeah, Kenyon. Yeah, that's that. We love it. Um, and these are both totally electric, no propane involved in this galley anymore. Right. The, we took the propane tanks completely out of the boat, other than some small ones we have for our grill outside, but uh, the internal propane system is completely gone. 
So if you're not familiar with boat cooking, one of the most epic things about having an induction burner versus propane is it doesn't actually heat up the boat. When we're cooking on shock mate and we're using the propane, it's equivalent to like lighting a fire in the fireplace on a 90 degree day. So having this just keeps you so much cooler in the tropics. There was a small microwave here that, and the shelf was only about to here in this opening, mm. but we needed more space. So I cut this out and cut out the shelf and modified it to fit the electric oven, which is microwaves, but it also works like an oven. So you can bake, it has an air fry function and a grill function and a microwave function, uh, convection and all these kinds of things. The turntable goes around if you want to uh, use it that we've baked lasagnas, we've baked all kinds That's of incredible. things in there and, <laughs> and it microwaves popcorn in a jiffy. How much do these two draw? They are each, they could work in a standard 15 amp household AC 110 volt current um, line. So yeah, 15 amps AC, which DC conversion is about 150 amps, um, you know, give or take losses and inversion system and stuff like that. But so we can run them with our system both together, but we try not to do it because we, I just don't want to push the limits of the systems. All right, I'm getting a little bit distracted by all of this shiny <laughs> metal over here. These are the isotherm uh, fridges. When we bought the boat, this was set up as a fridge and a freezer. Um, we have converted them over to solely refrigeration because we have two additional freezers. This one is actually not working right now, um, but this is our actual working fridge that we we replaced it with. It's called a drinks fridge because it doesn't have the freezer compartment that ends up losing okay. a lot of space and gets iced up a lot yeah, and stuff. Yeah, I don't want to lose the um, air. Yeah, so coolness. And it's a little narrow because you have plenty of storage. So all these cabinets, there's drawers here we use for mm. silverware and utensils and soap and towels and dishes and bowls and all kinds of stuff here. Okay, um, what is this, right? This is a garbage, it's got garbage. Was that something you added to? No, that was in there from, from the factory. What we did do though, um, is modify the whole counter tops and, and the sinks. When we got it, the, this, this was the counter was the same material as the counter up there, but they, and there were sinks were integrated like Corian solid surface material. And it had a salt water faucet and a fresh water faucet. Mm -hmm. And we didn't really like it. Um, so we took out the salt water, we kept the fresh water and we, I completely cut this out and put in the, the stainless steel sinks put it back together, routed a new edge, and laid two layers of fiberglass over the whole thing, and then painted it with this faux stone look material. And so far, we like it. If you're ever in Luperon, go see Natalie on Mondays. Monday after, or Monday around noon, I think, she makes bread in a wood-fired oven type thing outdoors. And it is just amazing. It, this is, it's a, it comes in a whole big round loaf and it's just hot. You got to get there and get it hot so you can hardly even touch it it's, and just peel it off and eat it. It's just so our second favorite cabinet other than the spice cabinet is the pantry, which is huge. It goes all the way back to the outer edge of the hall and fits enough stuff alone in just one cabinet to keep us alive for months. And then we'll go forward and show you the guest cabin. So Drew was just telling us that this is actually an open cabin at the moment. If anybody needs to, wants to come crew on Caterpillar, sail around the world, this could be yours. On the Caterpillar cruise. <laughs> it's very comfortable. Yeah, it looks comfy. Mm -hmm. The basic difference of this forward part is the stand-up shower versus the tub that you saw on the other side. Nice. Give us a sense for like, cause I'm guessing you can stand up. Let me stand completely. up for me? Yeah. And you're pretty tall. How tall are you, Bill? Uh, about six one ish, maybe. Nice. So that is a roomy shower. So the shower handle pulls out. You got that water maker for all your water needs. And the water heater.
All right, that looks like an escape hatch. One of our, or actually quite a few of our commenters were curious about that. They actually aren't required anymore under the ABYC standards uh, for catamarans. They required them initially for catamarans when they first started designing them because the conventional thought was, well, if they flip over, you need a way to get out. But it turns out over years and more and more catamarans are on the market, they're just not flipping over at the rates that they feared. So they're actually not, not a requirement anymore. So some of the ones that are lower to the waterline on some boats that have problems, people are taking them out and glassing them over. First thing I'll show you is the uh, water heater because I talked about how the engine is plumbed to the water heater and that's how it works basically. As the coolant from the engine comes up into this reservoir and then in through these lines and circulates through this 11 gallon hot water heater. It also has a 110 volt electric element which we don't really use. It can run off the inverter but we run the engines often enough that it's um, we get plenty of hot water. So 3.8 kilovolt um, isolation transformer. So that takes shore power and isolates it from all the power in the boat. Okay, so the next thing we have is the starter battery. And the system was configured originally with one starter battery for both engines. So we kept it that way. I just upgraded the starter battery to this I Odyssey, which is a really nice high-end battery. Um, and it starts both engines, no problem. And it charges from this unit over here. That white unit right there is a battery to battery charger. So it charges the starter battery from the house batteries because they charge at different voltages. You need a separate charge controller to keep that charged because it does not charge from the alternators like a typical boat starter battery would. Next thing from there, is the main house battery system and there's these three big red boxes red and black boxes that are li lithionics each one is a 400 amp 12 volt battery and they're connected to these um, battery management system boxes that control the whole operation so they cover you if you draw them down too far they protect you if you overcharge them they basically will cut off to protect the battery so you don't have a fire you don't have a catastrophic event i have one question yes if you mind sharing what you spent on each of those batteries um the batteries alone were for the three of them under just under fifteen thousand. okay yeah wow not counting the bus bars, the fuses, mm -hmm. the wire, the switches, any of the other stuff. Just the three big batteries. And I know some people think that the technology on the thin batteries is still pretty new, pretty untested. Have you guys ever had any issues? How do you find their performance? No, I, yeah, I've heard that. And, and my research, they've actually changed the chemistry in the batteries from lithium ion to lithium iron phosphate, mm -hmm. and that uh, made them a little bit less efficient per pound, but it increased their stability. So they don't, they're not prone to catch fire or have thermal runaway. And the lithium iron phosphate, I have not heard of a single incidence in the world where they've had an issue. So I, I, you can, someone can research it and prove me wrong, but the lithium LIFEPO4 chemistry batteries have never had a fire or thermal runaway that was attributed to the, the, the lithium battery as opposed to incorrect you know, All right. um, installation. So the relay system that you're looking at here is basically a protection for all the systems. If the battery shuts off while the alternators are running, it opens these relays and it shuts off the alternator regulators. It shuts off the inverters, inverter charger, whatever mode it's in. If there's any problems with any of the system and it shuts down, it immediately opens those relays, which shut everything else down so it can't, you know, have a problem. As far as these red knobs go, they're basically just jump switches that allow me to bypass the battery to battery charger if I want to start the engines from the house batteries. Um, I can turn one of those switches. 
if I want to, if the main house bank goes down, but the starter battery is still good, I can turn the other one and run loads through the charging sources through the starter battery. So it's a fail-safe mechanism for either side. If either side, either side goes down, I can bypass it. All right, Bill, I got one more question for you, and that is how many total hours have you spent on your knees pouring over these battery boxes? Because guys, he installed all of this himself. Yeah, um, months, I would say, not hours. I had knee, I had a little knee pad there that I would kneel on and I would lean over. I actually went home at night with bruises on my, on my oh arms my and, and my, my chest from leaning over and farting around with all these wires and I mean, just literally months. Ooh, all right guys, I hope you liked that tour. We certainly had a lot of fun exploring their boat. Joel has some last second trivia for you guys. I know how much you guys like trivia. Okay, so Caterpillar is hole number 52, but it's only the 22nd boat built by Nizna. So do your research, throw your guesses in the comments below. Also, how can that be? Yeah, that's, that's crazy, that but there's an actual answer for it. And also, uh, Caterpillar Crew is going to be in the, in the comments section. If you have any other questions that were not answered, they are going to be there. So ask away. Yep, leave your questions for us. Thanks for watching. Give us a thumbs up if you enjoyed this video. And we'll see you on the flip side. Is that it? Got anything else? Nope. These are the tales of Boab. Focus. Boab! Lola dipped. How come you're so quiet?